Hey everyone, this is Brad from DevOps Journey, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do a few powerful things in PowerShell. Let's go ahead and get started. So one thing you're going to want to get used to when working with PowerShell is using aliases and functions. So if you come from the Linux world, you should be very familiar with setting aliases. And basically, aliases are just a shortcut for a lengthy command that you don't want to type out. So the best way to understand this is just to show it. So I'm going to show the first command, which is git alias and you can see all the aliases that are set for PowerShell. So this gives you an idea of the default aliases that are set in PowerShell. And just to show some of them off, like we have CD here, you're all familiar with this command in command prompt, but the actual PowerShell way of changing location is set location, but they have an alias here, so when you type CD, it does set location. So these two things do the same thing. CD is just the shortcut alias for set location. There's a whole list of them here. They got copy for copy item. They have curl for invoke web request. So if you do invoke web request, that's basically how you go out to a website and pull things down. And in the Linux world, we call this tool curl. So Windows has made an alias for invoke web request called curl. So it'll make Linux users more familiar with running this. And yeah, there's a lot of default aliases, but let's get used to setting our own alias. So let's do that next here. I'm going to clear the screen. Now let's see if we can set an alias. So if I were to type a command here like get net adapter, you can see that this command pulls up all your network adapters, but it's kind of a long command to type out and you don't want to type it out every time. So what if we were to map it to the command ETH? That would be much easier to type. But if you type ETH, it's not a valid command yet. So let's map ETH to get net adapter and it's very simple to do. We just say set alias, we give it a name, the name will be F, and then we give it a value and this is going to be the command value. So we just copy that in there, hit enter. Now when we type F, we get the same results as if we typed out the full command get net adapter. And that really simplifies everything. You can do this for basically any command that you want and really just customize your PowerShell experience. All right, so that was a simple way of how to set an alias, but now I'm gonna show you why you need to use a function for some things. So let's say I wanted to get to a directory. Like my, I, I like to go into my code directory a lot. I have my labs there. So I wanna map the command lab to change directory to C drive code folder. So to do that, if you are a Linux user coming to PowerShell, you would think that you would do something like this. Set, set alias, name lab, value cd c code right and then you would type lab but you see that it does not like this and that's because we can't map an alias to something into a command and give it a parameter we need to do something else here and we need to use a function so let's go ahead and set a function to do this so instead of typing set alias we're going to type function lab and then within these curly braces, that's where we're going to put our command. Now we're going to put cd, and then we're going to put c slash code. Now when we type lab, we see that we still have a problem. That's because the alias function takes precedence over functions. So that's easy enough to fix. Just close out our PowerShell. You can see uh, Sapporo Japan there. And then we open up uh, our PowerShell again. Now if we type lab, we can see that it's not, that we don't have it. In. Now when we type lab, we see that no function is set. No. Now when we type lab, we see no function or alias is set. Let's retype that command. Function lab cd c slash code now type lab we see that that works when we type lab it changes to that directory now we have this new problem where when we set these aliases and functions they don't save because if you quit out of the powershell and go back in if you type lab or any of your aliases you see that they're not there this is where powershell profiles come in so i'll clear the screen and the best way to see where your profile is, is just to do dollar sign and type profile. And it tells you the full path 
of where your profile is. So you can see it's telling us that the profile is at this location. Now by default, this file probably does not exist. So I'm gonna do a PowerShell command here and you can easily just test this by going through Windows Explorer and looking for the path. But I like to use PowerShell commands here. And I'm gonna do a test path and I'll type profile. And basically what this is doing is checking to see if this file exists and it's returning false. So that means the file does not exist. Let's use a PowerShell command to create that file. So I'll just do a new item, the type to file path, and I'll feed it in the profile attribute. So this is the path that's being fed in. And I'm gonna just force it, because I'm a forceful person. And there you go, you can see that it's created, but it's probably empty. So let's go ahead and open it up in Notepad. And you can just do that with Notepad and then type dollar sign profile can see it opens. Now this is where we're going to set our aliases instead. So we'll do the set alias and we'll give it the name of F and then the value of get net adapter. So the second thing we had in there was our function. So we'll just recreate it. I'll call it lab cd there we go. So we have an alias set and we have a function just like we did before, but now it's in a profile. Close that out. You see when you type it, it doesn't work yet, but when we close out the PowerShell and relaunch it, you can see that our alias saved and our function saved. And it's that easy to customize your PowerShell experience and have all the commands that you need available to you. So I hope that was helpful. Aliases and functions and having a customized PowerShell profile is one of the most powerful things you can do on your system. So go ahead and try it out and please comment below what your favorite function or alias is. Thanks so much guys and I hope to see you all in the next video.